Hello. Hello, Taran. How are you today? Okay, thanks. How are you, Tommy? I am so excited to ask my academic advisor 73 questions if you're ready. Let's do this. Okay, let's do it. Come on in. Thank you for having me. So first, can you tell us who are you? I am Taran Tadal. I'm Director for Equity and Inclusion and an Academic Advisor at the Wharton School at the Undergraduate Division. What? what? Yes. Okay, so can you tell me what you're passionate about, Taran? I am passionate about education and access, so access to higher education. I'm passionate about helping people and I'm passionate about getting that work done. Mm, I feel that. So what is your most impressive achievement? To date, it is helping high school students, Philly public high school students, getting access to Penn College courses. Oh my God, you gotta tell me more. Yep, so we're working with an organization called Stepping Stone and they have been around since 1999 and they are working really hard to create actual access for underrepresented, historically underrepresented students in higher education. You are amazing. So Try. <laughs> Where did you go for, for undergrad? I went to Union College in Schenectady, New York. Okay, Schenectady. Mm -hmm. What did you major in? I majored in environmental studies, minored in English. Okay, so how far away is Schenectady from New York City? Ooh, it would be about two and a half to three hours drive. Okay, so pretty far out. Mm -hmm. Where did you go for your graduate? I went to the Graduate School of Education at the University of Pennsylvania. Ooh la la. Okay, mm -hmm. so what did you major in? Higher Education Management. Okay, and which experience was better, undergrad or grad? Oh man, I would have to say undergrad because I was a college athlete. Oh, what sport? Soccer. Oh, me too. What position? A forward, more offense. Okay, I was yeah. a defender. We're gonna have to do a little 1v1 after yeah, this video. Yeah, I'm down for it. Let's, <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> so have you had any other job besides advising? I have. I was working in admissions before this. Oh, how was that experience? That was amazing. It was a lot of short-term relationships that I built over time in different areas of the country. Oh, which part of the country is your favorite? Oh gosh, um, I would say probably Georgia, Atlanta. Oh. Specifically, yes, you can go never go wrong with Georgia. No, definitely not. So, when did you decide that you wanted to be an advisor? Uh, around 2014, I actually got called out by some students that I had recruited from Chicago. Ooh. They were in their first year and they were like, You recruited me, you got me here, help me through. Ooh, <laughs> so then you never turned back. I did not know these long term relationships are way better. So, how would you describe your job in one sentence? Ooh, I get the opportunity to help students through their academic journey. At at Wharton undergrad. Okay, so why Wharton? Ooh, I, you know, have a thing for, I went to the oldest college in uh, New York State. I work at the oldest university in the country. Wharton is the first business school, so why not? Why not? I mean, that's why I chose it. I mean, clearly. So are you happy you chose Wharton? I am happy that I chose Wharton. Yes. We are do about that work, most definitely. It's yes, we are. So where are we right now? We are actually in the new end of the Steine D building, in the research building, and we are in my office, which is the advising row of 1400 Steiny D. Wow, and it's a beautiful office, I have to say. Thank you. I see some kids in the background. Do you have any kids? Yes, I do. I have two coworkers, a two-year-old and a three-year-old, Kezia and Santino. Aw, hi, babies. <laughs> <laughs> so can you show me a little bit more of the new building? Definitely happy Amazing. to. Let's Amazing. do it. Cool. So how long have you been advising for? I've been advising for seven years now. Wow, long time. So you like the job, you'd say? Uh, yeah, just a little bit. I've been doing it longer than anything else. <laughs> <laughs> Understandable. So how many advisors are here at the Wharton School? We have eight advisors. Oh, nice. Okay, so what's your favorite part about advising? Getting to talk to students, learn different perspectives, understand their academic journey. It's amazing. Okay, what's the hardest part? Ooh, helping students understand the bureaucracies that exist for all of the academic rules that we have. Okay, understandable. Are the students here friendly? They are. Okay, what's some of the common characteristics, passions, or career goals of Wharton students? Ooh, they're driven, they're friendly, they are amazing, <laughs> they are multitasking geniuses. Mm, yes, we are. So what industry do most students enter after graduation? You'll see a lot of people doing finance and consulting, but we're finding that students are taking on startups and different types 
difference of perspectives, so nonprofit organizations, for example. Very cool. So what do you think is the typical starting salary for a Wharton student? Oh, it's anywhere from 90000 to 110000 Wow, Wharton students make money. Well, they're doing it. Yeah. <laughs> What does Penn offer that other universities don't, you'd say? Ooh, Penn gives you the opportunity to explore your interests in lots of different ways. So you mm. could be at Wharton, but also do a computer science minor. You can pick up a whole degree in the college if you wanted to. So it's broadening your perspectives in lots of different ways. Very cool. So one to 10, how similar is Penn to how colleges are portrayed in movies? One, nothing like it, or 10, it's identical. Ooh, I would put it somewhere around a seven. There's some things that are very accurate, but there's also some opportunities, especially at Wharton, to be able to make friends. It's not as cutthroat as you might see in the movies. Mm, understandable. So if you could choose a song to describe your experience as an advisor, what song would you choose? Oh gosh, I think the title is Work, but that Rihanna song where she's talking about work yes. and work and work, yeah, that would be fun. <laughs> lots and lots of work indeed. Yes. So what's your favorite thing about you, Penn? Ooh, I would say it's a combination of the people and the history, the way that they like to have, um, the way that they like to innovate, I would say. Hmm, yes. What's a typical day like here as a Wharton advisor look like? Mm, so it can be anywhere from having lots of student appointments to working on some policies to make sure that we're actually serving the community as best as possible. So very busy. Okay. How many student meetings do you have a day? About four to five. Okay. How many students come through with really difficult problems that you actually find hard to fix? Oh, that's really interesting. I would say probably two to three times a week I'll see something that I haven't seen before and then I'll have to consult with my colleagues. Okay. What's been your most unique encounter when advising a student? Oh, I have had, so this is in COVID world, right? Mm -hmm. But um, when I was working from home with my kids slash coworkers, I had a student who looked just really straight laced and he had these really serious questions and he saw one of my kids come into the frame and he literally picked up his cat and started playing and interacting with my two year old. Oh, wait, that's so cute. <laughs> it was amazing. Oh my gosh. So are there ever seniors that approach you senior spring with a lot of missing requirements? Yes. Okay, so what do they do? They panic, <laughs> and then we work it out together. We extend their graduation time if need be, and we get them to a point where they can feel good about what the next steps are. Okay, is that a Wharton classroom? It is. Oh my God, can we take a peek? Oh, wow. <laughs> Very cool. So what's the highest number of missing requirements you've seen a student have? 15. Oh my gosh, oh, yeah. upon graduation. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so what happens if they can't graduate? So they actually have a sunset period of eight years to figure out what they want to do, how they're going to complete their degree, and if they don't do it in that time period, then eventually we terminate the degree. Oh my goodness. Have you ever terminated a degree? I have not personally, but okay. I know somebody who has. <laughs> wow. So are Wharton students actually snakes? Sorry? Are Wharton students actually snakes? No. Okay, what's a Wharton stereotype that holds true? Ooh, they work and work and work. So overworking themselves is real. Yes, I think we do too. Mm -hmm. So can you build a concentration here at Wharton? You can. Okay, how do you do that? You can go to your academic advisor, talk it out a little bit, and then we'll give you a form where you will find a department and someone to sponsor you within the department and then bring it all together to create a certain number of courses, four to six courses you'll suggest for approval for an independent um, or individualized concentration. Very cool. So what's the coolest or uniquest concentration a student has made? Ooh, I've seen one where it was theater management and finance. Okay, oh, that's really cool. So what would you say is a common question that you receive from most students? Ooh, a lot of times it'll be how to get into a particular class or what's a good class. Okay, what would you consider as a good class? Anything that you find interesting, anything that you enjoy, chances are you're gonna have fun in that class. Good answer. Is there a lot of room to explore different classes or majors here at Wharton? Definitely. Once you get to sophomore year, I'd say by sophomore spring, it's really easy to explore lots of different uh, things that you might be interested in as it pertains to concentrations. Very cool. So if you can't get into a class and you really, really want to take it, what should you do? So you can contact us if you want to, but I would actually say 
go to the professor first and then the concentration administrator within the department can help as well. Okay. Good. So what is Wharton 101, 102 or senior capstone? That is our leadership journey. So we give students the opportunity to really hone in on the skills that they're building through Wharton, but would not have ordinarily thought that they wanted or needed. So we work on those through 101 all the way through 401. Okay. So what is a Wharton cohort system? Oh, so this is a chance for you to build a network and a family within your class. So 50 to 60 first year come in together and they are under a particular denomination of money within the cohort system. Wow, so what denomination of money do you represent? Euro. Okay, so what is this room to your right? This, these would be the GSRs. This gives an opportunity for group study, uh, individualized study if you want it, but you have the opportunity to use the big screen, to channel into Zoom calls, to do a lot of group work. You'll find that the classes have a lot of group work components. And so this is an opportunity for you to get together with your group that doesn't have to be in your room or the library. Wow. Wharton is amazing. So I know I took the advantage of doing Wharton Grip Trip, which was a research opportunity to go abroad to the Netherlands, which was amazing. But what other programs does Wharton offer? So Wharton offers the Wharton International programs, which are short-term programs that travel all over the world, giving you exposure to alumni connections as well as businesses in the area. Um, there's also Wharton Industry Exploration programs that gives people the opportunity to be able to look at very specific interests or industries and get exposure that way. Wow, very nice. So how many classes would you su suggest a student take every semester? I would say four to five. There are some students who will try to take six. They can do it, but they're really, really busy that semester, and I would rather they have a little time to sleep and eat. Okay, so how should a student sign up for a class? I would say through advanced registration, the system for Pen and Touch will give students the opportunity to sign up for classes. If it is um, an opportunity that the open or add period is still going on, then they can go into the system and add immediately in that way. Okay. So how long is early registration? That tends to be the semester before. So in the fall, we just had it in November. It tends to be two weeks in the beginning of November, and that is for the spring semester. And then in the spring semester, it tends to be in early March, and you're registering or asking the system for courses that you want in the fall. Okay, so do you have any class course codes memorized by this point? Oh gosh, yeah, a few. <laughs> I can imagine. What concentration would you typically say is the most difficult? Ooh, the most difficult, I think, would be probably accounting. <laughs> accounting. Mm -hmm. I can only agree. <laughs> what would you say is the easiest? I would say, oh gosh, the easiest? There are no easy concentrations. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> so do you have to help personal life advising as well or just academic? Yeah, I have some, some people who come to me for that. Okay. So when students return back to campus, do they visit you after graduation? They most definitely do. Oh, good. Good to hear. Any of your students recently get married? Yes, they did. Wow, that's crazy. Yes, <laughs> yeah. I'm super excited for those people. <laughs> yes. Is it strange to see students go from freshman year to senior? Yes, it can be. But seeing that growth and development is really exciting for me. What's one of the biggest changes that you usually see? I have seen one particular student who I love go from just a really quiet, just in his shell to blossoming into this massive student leader who's making a lot of changes in the culture here. Wow, that's so cool. Can you see students' wealth across campus? I can. How do you see it? Usually by the clothes that they're wearing slash jewelry that they mm, have. The jewelry, yes indeed. Mm -hmm. What would you say is a typical freshman's energy? I would say they're coming in, they're a bit nervous, they're really excited, they want to do all of the things. Hmm. How do students change between their junior and sophomore year if they do? I would say based on the internship that they've had, and internships are not required to be done sophomore summer, okay. but once they've had that experience and that exposure, they have a better sense of what direction they want to go in. Mm, okay. What well, internships are typical of, a, of Wharton students? A lot of consulting and a lot of finance. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. So how does your schedule change over the four years? So you start out with a lot of fundamental, intense 
courses, but you also have a chance to take some gen ed courses within your first and second year. By the time you get to junior and senior year, students are taking very niche classes and sometimes based off of their interests, sometimes as it pertains to their concentration. Okay, cool. So what is the STEP program? That is a successful transition and empowerment program. Okay, did you start this program? I did with Dr. Abiola. Amazing, so I remember when I did this program, it really helped me um, enter into school. What would you say is the biggest takeaway and why students should take that program? I would say the biggest takeaway is giving students the opportunity to call out some stressors that they might experience at the culture here. It gives them an opportunity to build their social capital and to really think about what building what we call a board of mentors looks like. Okay, lovely. So how many students take semesters off typically? Ooh, that's a great question. I would say before COVID it was maybe 50 15%. Now it's a little more like 20 to 30% because students feel like they have an opportunity to explore or take a break if they need it. Okay, cool. So I know you worked closely with the Office of Undergrad Admissions. What would you say Wharton looks for with their students? Oh, they're looking for students who are creative, who are willing to take a risk, who have some idea of what they might want to do, but they're open to trying new things to get to what they ultimately want. Cool. So any tips for application process? Ooh, be yourself, um, tell your story because you're the best person to tell that story. And so when you're in the essay or when you're writing your essay, act as if this person has never met you. What do you want them to know about you? That mm. story is really important. Yes. So UPenn is a work hard, play hard Ivy, but sure. I hear the phrase all the time, will you remember studying for this test or the memories you'll make at this party? What's your take on this quote? Oh, it would be the latter, the memories that you make at the party. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta say. How about the phrase, college is about three things, homework, fun, and sleep, but you can only choose two. What's your take on this one? Oh, again, I'm gonna say homework and party. <laughs> How to say it. <laughs> would you say the campus is diverse? I would say it is. Okay, so does it need more diversity? It doesn't necessarily mean more diversity. It does mean diversity of thought, for sure. Ooh, good answer. So what would you tell yourself when you were 20? Oh, I would tell myself to take more risks. Mm. And what would you tell yourself 20 years from now? Ooh, I would tell myself less sleep, more partying. <laughs> <laughs> so why do you think Wharton chose you as an advisor? I feel like I exhibited a lot of the things that advisors have and embody between active listening, really caring about the students, really caring about your experience. For us, we want to make sure that you are doing all the things, but you're doing it safely and that you are getting sleep and eating and doing all the basics that you need to take care of yourself too. Yes. So why do you think um, everybody watching this video should apply to UPenn or Wharton? Uh, yeah, I mean, UPenn is amazing. It's an awesome place. It is both urban and a little bit suburban slash campus feeling. I love Philly personally. I've been here for many, many years. So I love that Philly is part of um, the campus experience here. And I feel like the people, just the personality is very um, interesting and they want to get to know you and they're friendly and outgoing and yeah, I just feel like they're awesome people. That's what drew me here. Yes, and that's exactly what drew me. Penn is the best IV. So should Agreed. everybody watching this video seek your advising? I think so. Amazing, that's the end of the video. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. See ya. Bye.